Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another edition of the Kill Team Chronicles. This is our series of Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Battle Reports. This is Battle Report number five. And yes, if you were wondering if you heard the introduction music correctly, you did. That was Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison. And you're probably wondering, Commander Cheapskate, why are you playing Return of the Mac by Mark Morrison, which is a pretty catchy little one-hit wonder from the 1990s. Well, the reason why is because this game is kind of special and I promised my friend Dark Lord Mac that I would play that song because that is his favorite song of all time and he wanted it done for the introduction. He said, hey, Commander Cheapskate, could you play the introduction for me for my battle report? And I said, why not? So there you go. So this one, of course, is a Kill Team uh, Terror Tactics scenario that was fought between my two friends, Iron Major and Dark Lord Mac. And this time, the Iron Major is bringing his Indomitus Crusade, which is an Ultramarines kill team uh, made of entirely primary Space Marines. Uh, versus my buddy Dark Lord Mac with his Aphotic Blade of the Black Legion. So now we're seeing two enemies from ages past throwing it down in the battlefields of the distant future. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play some background music real quick. If you want to see exactly what each of the kill teams is bringing, go ahead and pause and take a look at your own leisure. So with that being said, let's get this on. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the scenarios real quick. The scenario is terror tactics. The objective of this scenario is to kill your enemy and cross into their territory off the table's edge to cause chaos and havoc behind enemy lines. As you can see, we're playing on our little forested area here that is made up of a 22 inch by 30 inch rectangular battlefield. And the objective for this is pretty simple, like I said, either kill your opponent or cross into their territory and, you know, sneak behind enemy lines to destroy, uh, you know, communication supply lines and things. You earn two victory points for each one of your models that makes it through your enemy lines, so you get two victory points that way. You also get one victory point for taking out your enemy models and putting them out of action as well. After four rounds, if you need to go on to rounds five and six, you roll d d6 to see if it continues on, and by the time of the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points is the winner. So with the scenario rules over with, let's go and talk about the battle plan real quick. So here's an overhead shot of the battlefield. As you can see, my friends are playing on a 22 by 30 inch area, you know, just like your normal kill team rules. And this time they're fighting in the middle of a force. So you see that we got hills and forests spread all throughout. Uh, we Most of our battle reports for Kill Team Chronicles takes place in an inverted environment, but this time, you know, we want to throw a little bit of nature in there and see what it'd be like to fight in the side of a forest. On the left hand side is my buddy Iron Major, which is our resident terrain wizard. So all these trees and stuff are made by him, which is actually kind of cool. He's deployed his Indomitus Crusade on the left hand side. My other friend, Dark Lord Mac, he's deployed his Aphotic Blade on the right hand side. And it looks like it's kind of gone for a straight line uh, formation. I'm not sure what their tactics are because I didn't play this battle report. I only took photos of it. But if I had to guess, it looks like one team is going to maneuver and assault for the flank, while the other half of it's going to try to defend at the same time. Now, which sides are doing that, I'm not really sure. But we'll see in the following slides and see exactly what happens. So, with the battle plan over with, we go directly to the deployment phase. All right, so starting on the left-hand side from my friend Iron Major for his deployment. Up on the top there, he has Sergeant Cassius the Noble, that is his sergeant, is also his leader. He's the guy armed with the power sword. Right next to him is Gaius the Aggressive, that's his combat specialist, is armed with a uh, auto bolt gun. And then right next to him, of course, are two members of his uh, regular kill team. I think that is Apollon, Apollon, Apion and Marco, I believe is who that is. I believe that are Sulla. But anyways, those are the two... Um, um, primary Space Marines, they're just armored regular bolt rifles, and they're just uh, right there part of the regular fire team uh, for the deployment for Iron Major. Meanwhile, on the top half of his deployment area, right in the back, he has Kato the Mysterious, which is his sniper, as well as his heavy, which is Marius the Somber, that is his heavy right there in the back there. And up in the middle there, of course, he has another member of his Primaris kill team, uh, that's just another uh, intercessor as well. And that pretty much makes up uh, Iron Major's deployment on this one. 
And across the battlefield on the, the Black Legion's deployment area for Dark Lord Mac. Up on the top of the deployment area, that is his leader, that is Asmodai the Mad of the Sons of Horus. That's his aspiring champion. Right in the middle of the hill there in the back, that is Thalos the Black of the World Eaters. That is his Space Marine Heavy Gunner, who's armed with a heavy bolter. And then right after that, he's got two more regular... Co uh, regular Chaos Space Marines are just making a fire team that's a Rockar of the Iron Warriors on the bottom there, as well as Axamond of the Alpha Legion there on the top. So that is the deployment for the top half of his table edge. And make up the bottom half of his deployment area right next to the hill arm of the Melta Gun that is Solvram Thrice Curse of the Death Guards. That guy is a. Uh, I think he's a veteran is what he is, he's armed with a melted gun. And right next to him, the guy with the little pink shoulder pad there, that is Ashrock Flace, uh, Faith Slayer of the Emperor's Children. He's a Chaos Space Marine Zealot. He's just armed with a bolt gun, bolt pistol, and frag grenades. And then, of course, you got the three Chaos Cultists. Two of them have auto guns, one has an auto pistol, as well as a brutal assault weapon, and that is the Shifting Mini. If you shift Mini, one, two, and three. And that pretty much makes up the deployment for my friend, Dark Lord Mac. So with the deployment over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one, and we roll off for initiative to see who goes first. All right, so we go directly to the top of turn number one for the Ultramarines. My friend Iron Major managed to take the uh, initiative on this one, and we take a photo directly of the battlefield after the move phase. So as you can see, it looks like he kind of goes on the offensive. Up on the bottom there, he has his commander, uh, Marius the uh, the Noble. I believe his name is Mark. No, Cassius the Noble. That's his name. Cassius Noble, as well as his couple, uh, two members of his fire team, as well as his um, combat specialists. They start maneuvering just normal six-inch movement phase right next to the force. It looks like their plan is to start engaging into the uh, Chaos Cult right there on the bottom of the screen at the same time he also moves up his uh, support element at the top which is his heavy gunner his sniper as well as another primary space marine looks like they're occupying the force and the top of the uh, center portion of the battlefield at the same time my buddy dark lord mac he looks like he keeps his leader as well as his heavy gunner keeps them located exactly where they are puts priority markers on them so that way they're readied up to shoot during the shooting phase at the same time he also just moves up normal six inches his members of his alpha legion and iron warriors uh, his two cast space marines moves them on the other side of the hill to start making a way towards that forest at the same time the bottom of the screen pushes for the shifting mini which is his three chaos cultists like using them for human shields it looks like and then right behind them he's got his two other chaos space marines i believe one of them is the um what you call it the iron warrior i believe is what he's called i forgot the guy's name and then right behind him is his uh what you call it his um his uh, veteran is armed with a melted gun and that pretty much makes up the movement for the uh turn number one Here's a close-up of the bottom of the screen. Looks like my friends have their two assault elements moving towards each other and ready to open fire on one another in uh, the shooting phase here. And here's a close-up of uh, Iron Mage's support elements taking cover in that center force in the middle of the battlefield. And finally, here's a close-up of Dark Lord Max, uh, guys. You can see in the back with little hit icons for the artillery dice. That's his leader as well as his heavy gunner. Those guys are ready up to shoot the shooting phase. And you can also see his, um, uh, looks like his, yeah, looks like his, uh, uh, two other uh, Chaos Space Marines, just normal vanilla ones. Uh, they're just moving on the other side of the hill in order to start engaging those support elements coming on their uh, right hand flank. So with the move phase over with, we go directly to the shooting phase. And the shooting phase, first blood goes to Dark Lord Mac. He takes his plasma pistol for his leader, for Asmodai the Mad, and decides to supercharge open fire. Not only does he manage to hit as well as wound uh, the uh, sniper, I believe that is Kate to the Mysterious, he also puts that guy out of action as well. It takes up both of his wounds for the damage of his uh, supercharged plasma uh, pistol. So because of that, this guy goes out of action. But instead of that happening, Iron Major decides to spend two of his command points to use the uh, Death Denied ability, which means that whenever a model is taken out of action, it becomes Flesh Wounded instead. So because of that, Kato the Mysterious gets back, back on his feet again, and now he's carrying a Flesh Wound on his injuries. So that makes the shooting phase on the top of the uh, battlefield. Meanwhile, on the bottom of the battlefield, most of the shooting was pretty much not that spectacular. Uh, for the most part, my buddy Iron Major, he does put out a lot of firepower for his intercessors, as well as his leader with their bolt rifles. So as you can see, there are two members of the shifting mini take flesh wounds, so because of those guys are injured and now they're a little bit easier to hit. He also managed to take out, I think, shifting mini number one, which is the guy who's armed with the auto gun at the top, so that guy will have to roll off onto any table and see what happens to him. However, the real like star of this whole combat, actually, was with my friend... Um, Dark Lord Mac, he takes, uh, I believe the guy's name is Sivram. Yeah, Sivram the Thrice Curse has to open up with his Melted Gun directly into my friend's combat specialist, Marius the Somber. So because of that, he manages to hit him, and not only did he manage to hit him, I think he put like four or five wounds on him. So because of that, this guy goes directly out of action as well, as you can see on the top there. So because of that, my friend loses his combat specialist in the uh, opening rounds of, no, sorry, not Marius the Somber. I'm sorry, Marius the Somber is his heavy. Uh, that's Gaius the Aggressive. Gaius the Aggressive, who's the... Uh, Combat Specialist, he goes out of action right there on the bottom of the screen, and because of that, he will need to roll up on the injury table as well. 
At the same time, I uh, believe my friend uh, Dark Lord Mag also activates his Heavy Gunner, which is the uh, uh, Thalos of Black, which is the uh, World Leader Arm of the Heavy Stubber. You know, his Heavy Bolter, rather. He also uses up his Command Point for uh, more bullets and manages to hit him actually one. I think out of the four shots he fired, I think he managed to hit him two or three times. However, only one we managed to go through onto uh, Marius the Somber, so because of that he's carrying one at wound on him already, and he's about halfway dead. In the morale phase, everyone passed their nerve test and nobody's broken, so because of that, we skip that phase and we go directly to the top of turn number two and roll for initiative to see who goes first. All right, so we go directly to the top of turn number two with the Black Legion taking the initiative on this one. As you can see in this photo, this is taken directly after the movement phase, and there's been actually some distinct movement going on on both sides. First of all, on the bottom of the screen, my friend Iron Major starts pushing the advantage forward with his troops. He does duck his uh, leader, um, Cassius, the noble, right behind one of those trees there, so that way he's a little bit obscured, so there's not much hits coming his way. He also moves up his two other intercessors from the regular fire team and moves them up forward as well, so that way they can start laying down some suppressive fire on the assault element on the bottom of the screen for the Black Legion. At the same time, at the top of the screen, what ends up happening is that my friend Dark Lord Mac charges in his, um, I forget the guy's name, the guy's the Faith Slayer, that's his uh, Zealot, Ashrock, Ashrock the Faith Slayer. He actually charges him in and actually makes it into close combat with Marius the Somber, so because of that, the Heavy Gunner as well as the uh, Zealot will be engaged in close combat. In response to that, he also countercharges one more of his primary Space Marines into Ashrock the Faith Slayer, so that way he's out number 2-1 to one in close combat. And I believe he also tries to charge his sniper as well, which is uh, Kate of the Mysterious, in order to try to charge directly into Ashrock. He does fail his charge, but he just moves closer to that guy so that way he can start putting some pressure onto that faith, uh, onto the uh, Zealot. Meanwhile, Doc Lord Mac, he pulls back his two Chaos Cultists and moves in behind cover uh, because they've already suffered flesh wounds. He also puts his um, Sravram the Thrice Curse, his veteran arm of the Meltagun, also puts him behind cover next to that fallen tree as well. At the same time, he also starts pushing up forward with his uh, leader. So because of Asmodai, the Mad starts moving up there at the top of the forest, at the top of the screen, as well as moving up his heavy, which is uh, Thalos the Black, make him take cover behind those trees so that he can lay down some suppressive fire with his heavy bolter. He also moves up his two other Space Marines, uh, the regular Chaos Space Marines. Those are uh, the guy from the Alpha Legion as well as the Iron Warrior. Has him move right directly in the middle of those two forests, so that way he can start helping some support for Ashrock the Faith Slayer. And that pretty much makes up the move phase for turn number two. Here's a close-up of Iron Mage's little assault squad with Cassius the Noble there in the bottom and the two regular intercessors right in the middle of the screen there. And here's a close-up of Ashrock Faith Slayer fighting Marius the Somber as well as a other intercessor as well. And you can see in the top there the sniper Kate of the Mysterious trying to engage with uh, Ashrock Faith Slayer in order to help put on some uh, combat support with that. Here's a close-up of Shifting Mini number 2 and 3 taking cover behind the forest as well as Savram the Thrice Cursed uh, taking position behind that that log there so that way it's a little bit hard to hit uh, that guy with the multi gun though he is super deadly and finally there's a close with dark mac uh, dark lord max leader up in the top that is uh, asmodai the mad moving up to uh, try to get into covering position so we could open fire with the plasma pistol right in the middle you have uh aras arakar the other iron warriors and axaman of the alpha legion moving in to occupy the center as well as thalos the black in the in the back there armed with his heavy bolter and that pretty much makes the move phase for this one so with the move phase over with we go directly to the shooting phase all right, so in the shooting phase, Chalk number one for Dark Lord Mac, a Savram the Thrice Curse takes aim of his melted gun, opens up on the Intercessor. Uh, the reason why he doesn't go after uh, Caius, uh, the Noble, is because he doesn't want to suffer the penalty for the obscurity rolls for shooting at him, so because that he goes after an open target where he knows he can perfectly hit. I think he put like three wounds on that guy, and I think two of them rolled out of action, so because of that, that's another primary space marine dead for the launch. The other two members of the Shifting Mini try to open up their auto guns, but are pretty much unsuccessful because, you know, they're only strength three against toughness four opponents who also have two wounds apiece, so that's pretty hard for uh, Chaos Cultists to compete against. However, I believe it's the second Primaris Intercessor that managed to shoot one of the members of the Shifting Many and managed to put that guy out of action as well, so because of that, that fire team has lost uh, two members of the three Chaos Cultists that make up that fire team. And that's pretty much what it is for the shooting phase. Everything else is pretty much misses or is unable to wound. So because of that, we uh, end the shooting phase and go directly to the combat phase. In the combat phase, this guy, Ashrock the Face Slayer, he's a pretty tough fighter, not because he managed to cause any wounds, because all of his wounds went directly into uh, Marius the Sombra, wasn't able to cause any injuries. I believe half of his attacks actually wounded, but they were basically saved uh, by the armor save, because he's just a normal Chaos Space Marine, he doesn't have any uh, armor piercing weapons per se. So he was unable to do any wounds that way, but he also managed to survive with a flesh wound. I believe it was the just the regular intercessor on the right-hand side that managed to put the flesh wound onto Ashrock. So Ashrock is easier to wound now, 
down. He has to uh, suffer some penalties. But at the same time, though, pretty good for this guy, you know, fighting against two intercessors all by himself. He's doing pretty good for himself. So that's pretty much been the combat phase. In the morale phase, everyone passed a nerf test and no one is broken. So because of that, we go directly to the top of turn number three, and my friends will offer no sh uh, net shift to see who goes first. All right, so that takes us directly to the top of turn number three after the movement phase. As you can see in this photo, the Ultramarines got to move first. So my friend Iron Maiden decides to start committing his forces and start taking the offense. The first thing he does, he starts to charge him with Cassius the Noble, tries to go after Savran Thrice Curse. Unfortunately for him, though, he wasn't able to successfully charge, so he just moves up closer in order to get to Savram Thrice Curse on the bottom of the screen there. Uh, my buddy Dark Lord Mad does try to open up with the Overwatch, but wasn't able to secure the six because that not much really happened there. However, the most dynamic movement took place on the top of the screen there. As you can see, another intercessor also charges in to take on uh, Ashwak, the uh, the Faith Slayer. So that way, those guys have now three primary intercessors uh, fighting against one lone uh, as Chaos Space Marine Zealot. At the same time, he also tries to charge forward with his uh, sniper, which is uh, K to the Mysterious, but is unable to secure that charge because I think he only moves up like three inches, I think. So that's all he's able to do for the most part. And that pretty much makes it the movement phase for my buddy um, Iron Major. On the other hand, though, on the other side of the table, uh, my friend Dark Lord Mac does start charging his forces. He tries to charge in with all three. Uh, I'm sorry, not with all three. I think he just charges in with his two Space Marines, the one from the Alpha Legion, the one from the Iron, and from the... Uh, Iron Warriors, but unfortunately for them, they couldn't make it, so they just kind of get stuck in the middle of the forest, there in the middle of the table, and I believe he just moves up his leader as well as his heavy gunner, so that way they can start shooting at targets, and that pretty much makes up the movement phase for turn number three. Here's a close-up of Cassius Noble as well as Savram uh, Thrice Curse. Unfortunately for my friend, um, Iron Major was able to connect that charge, so because of that Dark Lord Mag activates his fighter uh, who's armed with a melted gun and readies him so that way he shoots first during the shooting phase, and now he's really, really co close, which is very, very devastating for my buddy Iron Major. And here's a close-up of the charge phase up here on the top. As you can see, Ashrock Faith Slayer is now fighting three Primaris Intercessors to one. At the same time, you also see a Snapper also up there on the top, and you can see that the other Space Marines are trying to charge four, but aren't able to connect with the rest of the uh, Intercessor squad. So with the movement phase over with, we go directly to the shooting phase. And as you can probably guess in the bottom there, Cassius the Noble does not survive the shooting phase. Uh, Savron Thrice Curse opens up his Melted Gun and managed to hit him. Uh, because he was in the half distance range of the Melted Gun, he got to roll 2d6 and picked the highest wound result to see what he did. And he rolled a 5 and a 6. So because of that, uh, Cassius gets melted down to his base element. So he goes out of action. And he will need to roll up on the serious injury table to see what happens to him. And for the most part, that pretty much makes up the shooting phase. Everybody else either can't shoot because they charge or the shots miss for the most part. So because of that, we go from the shooting phase straight to the combat phase and the combat phase was freaking ridiculous on this side of the board um ashrock the faith slayer uh survives the attacks from both the intercessors that charged him he only you know, he does get wounded but it ends up being a flesh wound so because the ashrock faith slayer is still on his feet and then ashrock manages to put the final wound onto marius the uh I believe uh, the Marius, the uh, somber, managed to put him out of, uh, managed to take away his final wound and put him in a flesh wound as well. So because of that, Ashrock survives another round of combat, being outnumbered three to one against, uh, what you call it, against Intercessor Space Marine. So I guess it's true what they say, Slanesh does protect his champions. So because of that, this Emperor Children's Space Marine is still standing his ground, which is pretty crazy. So with the combat phase over with, we go directly to the morale phase. And this time in the morale phase, my buddy Iron Major does take a roll to see if his kill team is broken. And unfortunately, they are failed that broken test. So because of that, his team is now broken. They suffer penalties for shooting and for movement and everything else of that nature because of uh, that fact. Everybody else, though, manages to hold their nerve, though. Nobody's shaking because they managed to keep their nerve. But uh, with a broken kill team, that's absolutely a you know horrible thing to have to go through for the kill team chronicles. So with the morale phase over with, we go directly to the top of turn four. And we roll for initiative to see who goes first. All right, so that takes directly to the top of turn number four for the Black Legion. My friend Dark Lord Mac managed to take the initiative on this one, and this photo is taken after the move phase. As you can see in this photo, it just starts becoming a giant melee at this point. On the top of the screen, my friend decides to charge in all of his space screens, so Asmodai the Mad, he charged directly into Kato the Mysterious. It's because of the sniper and the leader are now engaged in close combat. At the same time, he charges in Thalos the Black, as well as his two other normal space screens, the one from the Iron Warriors and the Alpha Legion, and they charge and actually make it indirectly into 
to the other intercessors as well. So because of that, they're now engaged in close combat right there in the middle of the forests. And because everybody else is close combat and the bottom half of the field is unoccupied, my friend uh, Dark Lord Mac decides to advance forward with his cultists as well as Zavram the uh, Thrice Curse. As you see, they're about halfway across the battlefield, starting to head into my friend Iron Major's territory. If they can get past the enemy lines, they will get two net victory points apiece. And that pretty much makes up the move phase on this one. Here's a close-up of the Shifting Mini number 3, as well as Savran the Cursed moving across the battlefield, going directly into Iron Mage's, uh, Iron Mage's um, uh, deployment area, trying to get across the, to the battlefield so that way they can get behind enemy lines and score some points. And here is the mosh pit that is taking place at the top of the screen. As you can see, every Chaos Space Marine is engaged with the Intercessor. At the same time, the leader, um, Asmodai the Mad, is engaged with uh, Kato the Mysterious in close combat. And since everybody advanced or charged, there is no shooting phase, so we go skip shooting phase and go directly to the combat phase. And as you can see in the combat phase, it actually ended up being pretty deadly for what was going on in the combat phase. First of all, Asmodai the Mad managed to put the final wound onto Kato the Mysterious. So because that he goes out of action, he will need to roll up on the Serious Injury Table to see what happens to him. At the same time, uh, what's his name? Ashrock the Faithla Faith Slayer. He managed to put down and wound uh, Marius the Somber. So because that he does go out of action at that point, and so because that he will need to roll up on the Serious Injury Table. Now unfortunately for uh, my friend Dark Lord Mac, the Intercessors decided to concentrate their attacks, I believe one apiece onto Ashrock. Face Slayer managed to put him out of action as well, and they spent the other attack attacking the rest of the Chaos Space Marines. As you can see for the rest of the attacks, though, and not much really happening. Um, all three Chaos Space Marines were unable to wound the uh, two Intercessors because the uh, my buddy Iron Major Maddie is uh, armor saves because they're okay. And at the same time, the remaining attacks that they sent against the other Chaos Space Marines were unable to wound either. So it ends up kind of being for a draw for the combat phase. But it doesn't really matter at this point because at this point my buddy Iron Major decides to call the game because he realizes he has, there's no way he could possibly win. And so because of that, the Black Legion managed to win this terror tactic scenario on this one. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go directly to the after action report for the post game and talk about exactly what happened to each of the kill teams because this battle report is officially over. All right, so let's go and talk about the post game for the Indomitus Crusades. First of all, for injuries, Sergeant Cassius the Noble got the Hard Knocks injury, so he does make a full recovery and also earns one one extra experience point for that, so that is kind of nice. Guys, the aggressive makes a full recover. Same thing with Kato the Mysterious. However, Marius the Somber, as well as Marcus, who was the other uh, primary Space Marine intercessor. Those two guys died, so because of that, uh, they get removed off the rosters. For advancements, K to the Mysterious does actually advance to level 2, so because of that, he learns the Sharpshooter ability, and he also gets into the Headshot Tactic for my buddy Iron Mage to use in future battle reports. During the recruitment phase, uh, Iron Major recruits a new uh, heavy uh, gunner. That guy's name is Tullius the Grim. Uh, he equips that guy with a grenade launcher this time, so that way he can get two shots off or multiple shots off, whatever he can do with his grenade launcher uh, once he gets selected to do that. As well as hiring a brand new uh, Primaris intercessor named Luca, he takes up the space of the remaining uh, intercessor who died. In the end for the resources, the resources pretty much stay the same except for morale. Because they lost the terror tactic scenario, they lose two points of morale, dropping them to five points of morale in that resource. And their current record right now is at zero wins as well as one loss. And that pretty much makes up the host game for the Indomitus Crusade. Meanwhile, for the Aphotic Blade, uh, the, several, when it comes to the injuries, Ashrock Faith Slayer of the Emperor's Children got the Hard Knocks recovery, so because that does make a full recover, and also ends X1 uh, plus 1 experience points. As for Shifting Mini number 1 and Shifting number, Mini number 2, they make full recoveries, however, Shifting Mini number 1 is Convalescent, so because that, he will need to miss out the next battle report the next time that this kill team goes into action. For advancements, Ashrock Faith Slayer learned the Flagellant ability, as well as the Martyr Tactics, so because that, he's a little bit hard to kill. And at the same time, Thalos the Black learn the suppressor ability as well as overwhelming firepower tactic makes them a little bit more deadly for the next uh, battle report for the resources there is no change in resources so because that they're still packing four for intelligence and material eight for morale and five for territory and their current record now is at one win as well as zero losses so that's good do it for this one you guys as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is invaluable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram google plus as well as blogger.com for all latest greatest news about our hobby that's good do it for this one you guys you guys say classy and enjoy the rest of this mark morrison song return of the mac in honor of my buddy dark lord mac we'll catch you guys in the next one peace out